Hey guys, I am here filming my September wrap up and we have a ton of books to get through. So without further ado, uh, the very first things that I read in the month of September were Claymore volumes four and five by Norihiro Yagi. Um, this, these books actually dealt, finished up the, um, storyline of Teresa of the Faint Smile. We finally figured out how she relates to Claire, who was the main character that we were following in the first couple of volumes, and it introduced some mysteries about her. Um, I did like the wrap-up of the storyline. I'm intrigued enough to continue with the series. However, I'm finding that this is not a series that I'm super loving, and that was that's partially because the drawings are very simplistic and people tend to look like each other. It's mostly just fights and I, so it's like between, in the fights, I actually don't know who's fighting half the time because I can't tell the difference between them. Um, so I'm going to give it a couple more volumes to see if the storyline gets significantly better that I will, am willing to deal with the terrible drawings. Um, however, like, if it doesn't get a lot, lot better pretty soon, I'm going to end up dropping the series. It So I would say it was okay. <laughs> I was glad that they finished out the storyline. I was glad that I figured out how it related to Claire. I'm excited to see what happens with Claire, but I, I kind of really need it to be something amazing. Um, after that, I did read a novella called Forest of Memory by Mary Robinette Cowell. Um, it was about... The main our main character, Katya, deals with antiques and captures. It's, it's set in the future. And so she deals with antiques and captures. Everything is 3D printed in the future. So antiques is literally anything that was not 3D printed. So is like, was made by hand. Captures deals with like the sounds, sights and sounds of nature that not everybody gets to see anymore. Um... But she witnesses a dude shooting some deer like he's not supposed to, and she ends up getting kidnapped. Um, this was a novella that was very much not for me. <laughs> like, I'm okay saying that. Like, I did not understand the point of it. It has um, a little bit of a, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but it does have a very open ending. You're not going to get your questions answered, which... I don't often do super well with anyway. And then like, I don't think that I understood enough of what was going on. So then I didn't understand the point. So then it was just, it was clearly not for me. Um, however, on the positive, this is written first person perspective. Um, Katya is writing her account on a typewriter. So there are the occasional misspellings, which I think was super cool. It was a very cool touch. Um, but yeah, overall, not for me. Um, and then after that, I read Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. It is the first book in the Sixth World series. Now, this was a very interesting read for me. I had heard that this was amazing. It was groundbreaking. Oh my gosh, you guys, if you like urban fantasy, this is the book for you. And I mean, that's super overhyped, but that's a lot of what I had heard about this book. Um, I ended up having to stop around page 75 and recalibrate my expectations because it was so typical up to that point, except for the fact that we felt did follow, um, magic that was based around Navajo beliefs instead of, you know, Western European. Um, but it does follow our main character of Maggie. She is a monster hunter and, you know, she's called in to, to hunt some monsters and things kind of go from there. Um, but after, so again, very typical urban fantasy up until page 75 where I then recalibrated my expectations and then I enjoyed it a lot more after that. Um, and then after about mm, page 150, it actually did start to go very different, very, um, in a very interesting way. So I was very glad that I stuck with it up to that point because then I did see what some people were saying. I still don't think that this is super groundbreaking, by the way. I think it's very interesting. I think it's a great addition to the genre. It is not 
all that in a bag of potato chips. Um, I, like I said, I do, it is Navajo based magic. I appreciate that very much. I didn't think that there was enough world building going on. This is set like after an apocalypse, a clim a climate change type of apocalypse. And we just didn't get almost anything surrounding that. Um, but I will continue this series. I do want to warn you, there is a content warning I do need to make sure you guys are aware of. And that is that Maggie was in an abusive relationship. She does not yet recognize that that's what it was. She does not name it as such, but she is a hot mess of, of emotions and deal trying to figure her stuff out. Um, and it's never spelled out as abuse, but it is very clearly abuse. So just, just be careful with that. Um, but after that, I read The Unkindest Tide by Seanan McGuire. It is book ooh, 13 of the Toby Day series. And I loved this book. I mean, this is my favorite series. So, I mean, it was kind of going to be a shoe in for this month, but it had um, a surprisingly happy-ish ending. This is a dark urban fantasy series that follows October Day, who is um, half fae and a knight, a knight who is expected to kind of, you know, step in when the going gets rough, right? And so obviously this is 13 books in. I cannot say almost anything about this book without it being, you know, a spoiler in mass. But I do want to say that this, um, if you've read other books in the series, this again has a surprisingly happier ending than we normally get. Um, in this Tybalt, our one of the main favorite characters, Tybalt, is act is is just gorgeous in his overly protective manner. Um, I I loved the Lushak. I'm probably mispronouncing her name, but the Sea Witch. She um, she showed some amazing growth, and we got to see her with one of the sisters that she actually likes, which is amazing. And then, like, I just, I can't wait for the next one. I have to wait a whole year because this, I read this as soon as it came out. As soon, I bought it on the very first day, or on the day that it came out, and now I have to wait a whole year. So that's very sad. But I, but oh yes, this is, I'm honestly probably going to reread this story very soon because I liked it so much. And then... After that, I read a uh, Vampire Night, volume six and, no, not volume six and seven. I'm so sorry. Vampire Night, volumes nine and ten by Matsuri Hiro. This is another manga series that I was reading. Um, I, you know, and <laughs> so I read, I read volumes nine and ten, and it is such a hot mess. And before, it was like, soap opera hot mess where you're still like super invested and now it's just hot mess and so I, I like the storyline got so freaking weird and the drawings are really hard for me to follow like there's a couple characters who are related and I couldn't tell the difference between them and then like there's a lot of focus on one of the relationships and which I didn't like. I didn't like that relationship. And then it also meant that one of my favorite characters kind of got left out in the mud. And I was just like, I, I just, mm, I just can't do it anymore. <laughs> like, so I looked up actually where the series is going to go and I hate where the series is going to go. So I just decided to cut my losses here. I, I, I read 10 volumes of Vampire Night and now I am done. Um, so there you go. And then after that, I read Sapphire Flames by Alona Andrews. This is the fourth book in the Hidden Legacy series. The first three follow the main character of Nevada Baylor. And this book actually follows her younger sister, Catalina. This is an alternate universe where there was a serum. I think it's called the Osiris Serum. That was... Um, you know, discovered, and essentially if you took it, there was a chance that you could 
either kill yourself, go turn into a monster, or you could develop magical powers. And, and that was like more than a hundred years ago. So now we have this world where there are a lot of people who can use magic. Catalina is one of those people. And she, um, she has this really unusual power, which I was so excited to dive into, um, how she uses it and what it means and the ethics surrounding it. Cause she essentially, she's, she's called a siren. She can, sorry, this, that spoils. Oh man. I'm sorry, guys. That does spoil a little bit for the first three books. It's not a huge spoiler, but yeah. Um, but she's a siren. She can actually force people to do what she wants. Um, because they, they want, they love her and they want to make her happy. Um, I loved Catalina as a character. I loved her grappling with the ethics of this magical power that she occasionally has to use to save herself, to save her sisters. Um, it, it's, it's very good there. She is political politics wise. There's some politics in here. Um, there isn't, she is considered the head of her house, which doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, but that used to be Nevada. And so there is some explanation given as to why Nevada is no longer the head of house. I hated the explanation. Unfortunately, I thought it was actually very badly done, surprisingly, which is Alona Andrews is normally really, really good at that kind of stuff. Um, I, Sorry, I'm reading my notes just real quick. Um, I did like the return of some of the older characters that we we saw in the first three three books. It looks like there might be some setup for more romances, which I'm very excited about. This is like more of a paranormal romance, and it's a with with a strong strong emphasis on the urban fantasy stuff, and and it was very good, and I'm very excited to continue on. This is another one that I bought basically the day it came out and read almost immediately. So now I have to wait for another year. <laughs> Great. Um, but I am very excited to continue that series. After that, I did read Harriet the Invincible by Ursula Vernon. It is the first book in the Hamster Princess series. It is an elementary school chapter book. So a very easy chapter book. And it's, um, it follows Harriet the princess. She's well-rounded. She's She basically had a curse put on her when she was little that says, you know, when she turns 12, she's going to like prick her finger, I think, on a hamster wheel. And so then, and then go into a super, deep, you know, deep sleep kind of thing. And so she's kind of looking at that going, well, the curse will protect me until I'm age 12 because a curse wants to be fulfilled. So I'm basically invincible until age 12. And so she goes out adventuring and does all these really cool things, which I think is such an interesting take on that particular trope. And I, I just really liked it. It it dealt with her coming of age at age 12 and what that meant and how she could still save her kingdom. Um, and then the, the other part that I really, really enjoyed is that Harriet is super weird about fractions. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to describe, but it is something that I do. And it was so nice to see that in a book. I've never seen it before. And so it was really, really nice, but I mostly read this. This is not my normal fare, but I read it because it was recommended to me by um, my friend's daughter and I said that I would read it and get back to her about it. So, but I am very, I do think it is a very cool series. Um, and then after that, I read Machine of Death by Ryan North, uh, Ryan North, Matthew Bernardo and David Malky. This is a short story collection and it is all about, um, the machine of death. So basically Ryan North, uh, create, created Quant's dinosaur comics. And in one of them, he posited this machine, um, where you, you give it a sample of your blood and it tells you how you're going to die. Not when or where, just how. And it kind of had a sense of humor in that it might be like old age, but it could be like your old age, or it could be like an old guy kills you. Right. 
And so it inspired so many short stories that they actually just, they pulled it all together into this volume. And I actually, I really, really like this. I don't normally read short story collections because I just don't like, I, I don't love short stories in general. And so, um, I generally, I often struggle with them, but this one I just loved. I thought all the stories were generally very high quality. Um, I didn't like all the short stories, but I appreciated each one for what they were trying to say and what they were adding to this kind of, you know, book. Like it, they all said something different and I really, really like that. I highly recommend this to anybody. It is very, very cool. I mean, and just in case you're wondering like how cool it is, I still think about some of these stories. So there you go. Um, after that, I did read Discount Armageddon, which is the first book in the Encrypted series by Shauna McGuire. This is actually a reread. Um, when I first read this, I had, I, Shauna McGuire was still a very, very new author. And, um, so I kind of have had pigeonholed her into what ex I should expect from her books. And I was wrong. <laughs> That's, that is the, the, I was just, I was just terribly wrong. Um, and so I hated this. And so it, it had been a couple years. And so I decided to give it a second chance. And I'm very, very glad I did. Um, this book follows, or this series follows a family of cryptozoologists who essentially act as liaisons between monsters and humans. They, they make sure that like the monsters are like doing okay and living in the world okay and not killing humans. And if they are killing humans, then, you know, taking them out, like killing them, killing them back. And, um, so this book follows Verity Price. She has to, she's currently in the midst of a huge decision of whether she wants to follow in the family footsteps of being a cryptozoologist, or if she wants to try to make it as a, um, ballroom dancer, professional ballroom dancer. Um, and so that's, so now she's in New York trying to make that decision. And, of course, like she still has to do cryptozoologist duties there. And, you know, some cryptozo or cryptids start going missing. So she has to investigate. There you go. There's the start of the story. And I thought it was very, very good. There were still some things in it that I did not like. I did not appreciate. I swear the foreshadowing is going to kill me. I, if you, just as a side note, if you're an author and you say something like, and that was my first mistake, I'm going to sit here and roll my eyes and just want to cry. I hate it so much. And there was a little bit of that, not terribly, but a little bit of that. There were some other things like little quibbles that I had, but generally speaking, very solid, good world building. Shauna McGuire is excellent at her world building. She's excellent at building characters and having those characters interact in a very realistic way. So I am very excited, very happy I gave this another chance and I am excited to continue with the series. Um, after that, I went ahead and read Gem in the Holograms, Volume 5, Truly Outrageous by Kelly Thompson. This does follow <laughs> Gem and the Holograms. So that really terrible 80s cartoon, they re they updated it. Um, it is now a comic book series. And um, there's not a whole lot that I can say about this volume without completely spoiling the rest of the series. However, um, this, this volume is three regular issues plus the 2017 annual. It did progress one of the main storylines that we've kind of been touching on each volume and it progressed it in a very major way. It didn't resolve it, but I do feel like it'll probably be resolved in the next volume. Um, and then, you know, like that's it. It's, it is, I do recommend this series in general though. It is very fun. It's, very different than like your superhero comics. And one thing that I do appreciate is that it is a predominantly female cast. There is actually only one male, main male cast member that I can think of. And the rest is female. And they're very, the females are very different from one another. And so I very much appreciate that. So, Gem and the Holograms. 
After that, I read Breakwater by Shannon Mayer, which is book two in the Elemental series. Um, I actually struggled with this book a little bit. Now, so this series is about Larkspur, who is a fae. In the first book, we meet her. She has had her powers blocked. And so she ends up becoming a guard and, you know, things happen, which I can't tell you about because that would be spoiling. But um, in this book, instead of dealing with the consequences of what happened at the end of book one, she's actually sent off on a diplomatic mission. And these are really short books. So they're between 200 and 250 pages, which is really, actually really nice. Um, but because there's not so much time, the world building, I can tell it's going to just build on itself each book and we're going to learn more and more. Same with character development. It was very light on character development in the first book, but we got more in this book. So I'm assuming in the next book we'll get even more, which I'm actually, I'm okay with that kind of a format. Um, the biggest problem I had was that Larkspur did not know how to trust, who to trust for about two thirds of the book. And she's making these big decisions about like life and death decisions without really knowing who to trust. And I was freaking out for her. <laughs> so I spent like 150 pages just freaking out for her. Like, oh my gosh, please. I hope you're not making the wrong choice. Um, but after that, it kind of resolved itself, and, but I did struggle to read it because I was just so sure that it was going to end so badly. <laughs> um, but other than that, it was very fast moving, very action packed. And that was, I thought it was super fun. I'm going to definitely continue this series. Um, and then after that, I did pick up volume one and two of Short Cake Cake by Sue Morishita, um, it is about a girl named Tan who um, is in high school, but her high school is in a town that is two hours away because that is the closest one. And so she decides that instead of taking the bus every day, she is going to move into the boarding house in the town where her high school is. It is a shoujo beat manga. It is a hot mess of teenage drama where our main character is well loved by everybody. Um, but I actually like it. It's not, I don't feel like it's super, super, it's definitely not realistic. It's not, but it's not super over the top. At this point, it's just kind of cute and kind of sweet, actually. And then our main character is super oblivious. <laughs> and so we get some great lines where she, it's like, she gets some lines that we more typically attribute to males. So like, for example, she's, out with somebody like exercising with a guy who likes her and he, she he's just like sitting there thinking oh she's so pretty and like she's thinking I wonder what's for dinner <laughs> I'm like I was like yes that's so exciting um and it did make me laugh on occasion and then bonus points to this because the drawings are very clear and the people are much more distinct so I was able to follow it much more easily than um, I have been like either Claymore or Vampire Knight, the other two manga series that I read this month. So yeah. Okay guys, we finally got through them all 24 minutes later. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, um, so that's all that I read in September. Uh, it was a great month for reading and, I liked a significant portion of the book, so that is awesome. Um, I hope that you guys are having a great reading month now in October. I hope it goes very well for you. Um, so I will uh, see you guys again soon, and until then, happy reading. Bye.